you know, let, let's not kid ourselves here. So I watched Dallas Mavericks Lakers about 4 o'clock Pacific. I love Dallas's roster. I just love it. I just, I would, I, if you're Mark Cuban, you have just got to love this. You found your next Dirk Nowitzki, except he's better. Luka Doncic. Uh, you got uh, uh, Seth Curry from Portland. What a nice find that kid's been. Uh, it, this, this Dallas is going to be really good for the next decade. I mean, they may have the scoring champ five of the next 10 years in Luka Doncic. The kid's 20 years old. He's way ahead of LeBron in terms of scoring ability. He's a tremendous young player. And I'm watching that game, and I'm like, Dallas's roster is younger. It's deeper. It's more athletic. They have a 20-year-old that's going to be a star in this league for the next 15 years. And I look at the Lakers, and I'm like, good God, if you took LeBron out of this lineup, it's a reality show. It's, he is the super glue to a mess. Kyle Kuzma was awful last night. I mean, I like Danny Green, but he's 33. He's old. I like Anthony Davis a lot, but he's brittle. This roster, JaVale McGee, Deion Waiters, J.R. Smith, Dwight Howard, and KCP, if it was a reality show, if this was hard knocks, sign it to a lifetime deal. This is, this, this is a, a mess. It really is. If you take LeBron James out of this Laker roster, all you Laker fans, this is the Pelicans with Anthony Davis, except not as talented because they had Drew Holiday, who's a total baller. Drew Holiday is an excellent NBA player. That's an all-star level player. This roster for the Lakers is, it is, this is not well constructed. LeBron is completely super glue with this team. And this is why, of course, LeBron's going to be the MVP or at least should be. I mean, if you take Giannis out of Milwaukee, they're not the same team. Nobody would dispute that, but that's a playoff team. It's well coached. They have multiple good players. This Laker roster is old, dysfunctional. It's got some of the goofiest players in the NBA on it. All of them, all of them out of their prime. Dwight Howard, J.R. Smith, Deion Waiters, JaVale McGee, Kyle Kuzma, I'm not sure what his prime is. KCP, I like. I do. I think there's something there. But, you know, he's had issues, house arrest two years ago. I mean, that's just a thing. It's part of his, you know, his NBA reality. But just, just to give you a heads up on this, Dallas has a way better roster. It's younger, it's more athletic, and they got a star at 20. If LeBron wins a title with this reality show, GOAT, I'm over. I'm not even arguing it. Because they have no business winning. They got to go through potentially Portland, Houston, the Clippers, and then a Milwaukee or Boston. I mean, you're watching this thing last night. Take LeBron out of this. Look at this roster. It is Anthony Davis and cross your fingers. And LeBron is strong enough and verbal enough and vocal enough and the leader so that all these sort of disparate, weird, odd NBA reality show dysfunctional parts kind of, they kind of respect him. They work hard out of respect for the king. They kind of make sure they're in line. But you got J.R. Smith yesterday. I didn't, I didn't bring enough underwear. Dwight Howard, I refuse to wear a mask. <laughs> God, the only thing this team is missing is Antonio Brown. It is, it is, never forget this. Before LeBron got there, it was a you-know-what show for about five years. Magic, gone. Agent, new GM. Owners fighting with each other, brother, sister. God, I'm watching this thing last night, man. They are, LeBron is super gluing this thing together. They have no business being the number one seed in the West by five and a half games. They have no business being that. No way. No way. No how. Number one seed in the West by five and a half games. I love where Dallas is going. I just like LeBron. Because right now that the Lakers are the second best constructed basketball team in the building they play in by a mile. And did anybody see the problems with the Bucks last night? It worries me. Antonio Daniels is now joining us, the Pelicans color analyst, played in the NBA for 13 years, one of my favorite people, joining us via the Coward Global Satellite Network. So I've been saying this. This sounds crazy. I'm going to tell you something that sounds tra crazy, but it's true. So years ago, if I'd have said to you, if Draymond Green didn't kick LeBron in the – you know what? <laughs> the Warriors would not have won two more titles. Now, that sounds ridiculous because he got suspended. But the truth is they lost. He got suspended. And Kevin Durant later said if they'd have beaten Cleveland, I'm, I'm not going to Golden State. 
So that sounds ridiculous, but Draymond's kick to LeBron actually won an additional two titles. It sounds crazy. I'm going to say something, Antonio, and you're going to think I'm nuts. If Chris, Chris Middleton could dictate the NBA for about five to ten years, if he struggles and Giannis, cannot, Giannis drops 40 a night, is spectacular, and can't get past Boston because there is no two, and you know in this league now, you not only need a two but a three. Giannis is leaving, and he's going west, and he may go to the Warriors. And I watched last night, and Middleton struggled. Giannis was unbelievable, and I think to myself, Chris, you got to deliver in the next two months. I know it sounds crazy. Is Chris Middleton the key to Giannis staying east? No. I think the key to Giannis staying east is a lot more than Chris Middleton. You know, when you start looking at the playoff race and you start looking at stars being stars, number one, if Giannis averages 40 points a game, the Bucs are probably going to advance. But you have to look at more than just Chris Middleton. There's a lot of role players because what teams are going to do is exactly what the Toronto Raptors did last year. They're going to build a wall. So what that means is guys like Chris Middleton, guys like George Hill, all of the um, quote-unquote role players, they have to knock down shots. This is bigger than this Chris Middleton. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I'm, 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 I'm watching last night Dallas – and the Lakers, and I really like, I love Dallas's roster. It's young, it's athletic, they have a 20-year-old star. They're so, and I like their coach. I yes. really like where Dallas is going. And I wanted to remind the audience this morning in Los Angeles, <laughs> if you take LeBron out of this Laker team, it looks a lot like the Pelicans years ago. Mm. It's, it, it, except they had Drew Holiday, who you know is a very good player. I got to tell you something. I think LeBron is holding, I do not think the Lakers are brilliantly run. I do not think they're one of the more well-capitalized ownership groups. I do not love the front office. I do not love the roster. I watched last night. I feel like LeBron is super glue to a reality show of odd, unique, way past their prime parts. Is, is, am I reaching on that? No, but LeBron is also, um, he's the key to that team, and, that, and that's a given. That's a given. I mean, we're talking about, at his age right now, the best player in the world. He is the best player in the world, but he's all, this is also a team that is built and constructed with guys whose skill set complement LeBron James. Go back to the Miami Heat days. Go back to the Cleveland Cavaliers days. These are guys that don't need the basketball. These are catch and shoot or catch and finish guys. The only other guy on that team that actually needs the ball is Anthony Davis. Who else on that roster actually needs the basketball to be effective? This is on LeBron. That is why he is leading the league in assists. So, I mean, it's one thing because, yeah, you can say, OK, they have a lot of different personalities. You know, they have a Dwight Howard or, you know, they have a, a Deion Waiters or they have a J.R. Smith or they have a Rajon Rondo. They have a lot of different personalities. But LeBron, throughout the course of his career, has shown to be the ultimate equalizer. So, I, yeah, this is this is guys that that don't need the basketball. This is guys that they put around LeBron James, whose skill set really complement what he does best. Antonio Daniels joining us, 13 years in the NBA. So I said something this week and people went crazy. I said, you fans and media have never told me points matter. If they did, I'd talk about okay. Elvin Hayes, Moses Malone, Dirk Nowitzki, and Carl Malone on my show all the time. I don't. I talk MJ. Why? Because he wins titles, and that's what you all care about. If Kawhi Leonard is holding a trophy in three months... And don't he is, you do this. Now, now time don't out. Don't you do this, Colin Coward. If, if, don't you do this, if, Colin Coward. If he is holding a trophy, third franchise, and by the way, he wins in Canada. He wins with Popovich. He wins with the Clippers. Three different styles, three different coaches. How in God's name is he not a top 10 player? How is he not a – all that matters oh, – Top 10, maybe. Okay. So, okay, you tell me my starting five all time. Kareem, LeBron, Magic, Michael – who you putting over him? He's better than Larry Bird defensively. Okay, it's a lot of different. See, for me, it, it, it's longevity matters. Longevity matters. Like, we're talking about a guy in Kawhi Leonard. Let's hypothetically say that you just spoke that into existence. And Kawhi Leonard and the Los Angeles Clippers win a championship. Kawhi Leonard's played nine years. He has played nine years. We have to give respect to those that came before Kawhi Leonard. You look at guys like Tim Duncan. 15-time All-Star. Kobe Bryant, 15-time All-Star, 20 seasons. Shaquille O'Neal, 15-time All-Star. Like, that matters. 
if you break down Kawhi Leonard's career, and again, Kawhi Leonard is fantastic, so I don't want to sound like I'm discrediting his body of work. But in his nine seasons thus far, he's averaging 57 games a season in nine years. There are other things that matter. I, yeah, I, I think championships do matter. Other things matter. MVPs matter. Scoring titles matter. You know, you look at what some of these other guys have done. This is not to discredit Kawhi Leonard because he is fantastic. But to automatically thrust him to top five, the thing I try not to be, Colin, is a, a prisoner of the moment. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard is fantastic. But durability and availability, those things count. Those are skills. So just as much as we give him credit for winning championships in Canada and winning championship with the San Antonio Spurs and possibly winning a championship with the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, if this is LeBron, we are discrediting LeBron because he didn't stay put. So we're saying, oh, he has to move different places to win championships. But now we're giving Kawhi Leonard credit for doing that same exact thing. Okay, so I'll throw this at you. So let's not take Michael and Kareem and uh, let's go KD. Today, KD's better than Kawhi. Everybody thinks that. In three months, Kawhi is holding and has led three teams to titles. Who's better? Legacy. KD, he doesn't play the defense. I don't know if he's mentally quite as strong as Kawhi. we we, We can't take that stuff. We don't take how how mentally strong somebody is into consideration when we're talking about all-time greats. We don't? We can't take that into consideration. No. We take into consideration mental toughness. Now we're, 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 now we're searching. Now we're really searching here. Because, if, again, if we look at the overall resume of things, look at Kevin Durant's overall resume. You know, as far as two-time champion, two-time finals MVP, scoring titles, four-time scoring champion, uh, all of the, one of the, if not one of the best offensive players to ever grace the NBA. Yep, yep, yep. I agree. MVP. Yep, I agree. MVP. All of the, and that's the other thing about Kawhi Leonard, that he has not done, that everybody else on this list has done that we're talking about. He hasn't won an MVP yet. But he won a defense. And it's tough to put somebody in the top five all okay. time. But he won, a, he won a defensive player of the year, an all-star MVP. He would have a third title leading the team. He's got to be somewhere around the top dozen. Can you acknowledge that? We, we got to start. Putting- I can definitely, I can definitely acknowledge that, Colin. But to go all the way to top five and to just jump over guys like Tim Duncan, to jump over guys like Kobe Bryant, to jump over guys like Shaquille O'Neal and Wilt Chamberlain and Kevin Durant, these guys that if you look at their overall resume and durability and availability and longevity of their careers, that matters. That has to count for something. So I got to tell you a story. I I, um, I love Zion out of college. And I said, I, I made mm-hmm. a prediction. I said he's going to be a top 20 player in the league. I don't care that he can't shoot. That's not fair. He's at 18 years old. A lot of guys come into this league and can't shoot. You know that. Mm-hmm. You can develop a shot. What you can't develop is that body, that charisma, that power. You can't develop that stuff. Some of it's just DNA, right? Right. But it's interesting with Zion. So I was talking to Mark Cuban about three or four months ago. The NBA ratings were down, and we went to an email exchange. And I said, you know, I think the NBA ratings are down because everybody's hurt. And he right. said to me, he goes, Colin, that's overrated. There's only about two guys in this league that get a rating. You know, LeBron does, maybe Steph does, and Durant does. He goes, it, it's people either like the game or they don't. It's not just about individual stars. And it, it got me thinking about how many guys move the needle in the NBA ratings. And I'm thinking to myself, Zion set college records with Duke, broke the NBA summer league ratings. The league put him in the bubble opening game, the Christmas opening game, and the NBA regular season opening game. Could I make the argument? Rick Buecher did yesterday. He is the number one TV draw in this league. Today, this morning. Yeah. You, you, can, you can definitely make that argument. And I think one of the reasons that you can make that argument is because – We've seen LeBron so long. LeBron is the best player in the world, but we've seen LeBron. Yeah. You know, with Zion, we only have 19 games of footage. You know, um, what this young man brings to the table, like you said, size, strength, athleticism, agility, that body all in one package is unheard of. He's one of one in NBA history. And you can have greatness fatigue. You know, like we talk about all the time, when you think about how boring the San Antonio Spurs were for 20 straight seasons or the New England Patriots yeah. or when Tom Brady and Belichick, like you can become fatigued with greatness. Yeah. And as great as LeBron is, we know what we're going to get out of LeBron. 
you know, with these young guys in the NBA, the Zions, the Lucas, the Trey Youngs, some of these guys, like, they are just scratching the surface as far as the future is concerned. And it is exciting to watch these guys grow before our eyes. We did the same thing with LeBron when he came in, his first game in Sacramento. It's like, oh, man, this guy is great. Let's see what he becomes. Now he's in the GOAT conversation. So to watch the process of someone come into this league and become a boy and grow into a man, it's awesome to see. And right now, I can definitely, I agree, I'm traveling with this team. I have seen what it's like when you pull up at hotels. I've seen what it's like <laughs> when Zion walks in the building. Like, there's a different aura. There's a different ambiance around this young man. You should be a broadcaster. You're very, very good. You know, you should try that broadcasting thing out. <laughs> Antonio Daniels, Pelicans analyst. I love having you on the show, man. Love your energy. I love having you on. I, and I like the fact that you disagreed with all my stuff today, but I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks ditto brother anytime you need me i'm here man all right antonio daniels love having him on the show